firstly the name i have done this mistake okay <laughs> i have i have not done this mistake yes i have not done this mistake <laughs> I also took it personally when people told me that you probably are not a good lawyer and that is why you are not doing this. Hey buddy lawyers, I know, I know, you are waiting for the podcast to start. But before that, quickly let me tell you something about SRM School of Law. Getting a law degree from an institute which has many specializations is a good option. Because this way you continue pursuing law in the area you enjoy. And one of the finest courses of BLLB and BCom LLB is at SRM School of Law. and the courses are approved by the bar council of india apart from its reputation it has some of the best infrastructure and faculty having qualified teachers available on 24/7 basis giving individual attention their curriculum and pedagogy are structured of global standard they also conduct moot court state level and national level competitions so that students get practical exposure apart from court visits and internships so if you are searching for a good law school recommendation Do check out SRM School of Law. It will definitely put an end to all your searching. Law entrance test dates of SRM School of Law, that is the SRM JEEL, are on 9th and 20th of June 2021. But they also accept CLAT scores for admissions. So all the best, guys, and now you can enjoy your podcast. Hey, budding lawyers, welcome to the podcast. Today we are going to have a chat with Ms. Chavi Agarwal. Uh, Chavi is the founder and CEO of Mrs. Daku Studio, a six-figure blog that aims at helping women start their own online businesses, scale it, and make money from home. Hi, Chavi. What's up? Hi. Um, nothing much. Um, I'm fine. How are you? It's great. Uh, so you are uh, like it's not new for you. Like you have been into podcasts and also. Uh, Uh, featured in your story and stuff, so it's uh, a kind of you know a popular person has joined on budding lawyers after long time. <laughs> I haven't been featured on your story as such. I did write for them, uh, but yes, I've been featured on Forbes and Business Insider. Oh, uh, okay, that's great. But I thought I read a story of yours on your story too. So. Yes, I wrote that. Okay, you yourself. That was an wrote article that. by India. Yeah. Oh, my okay, story okay. actually hmm wait so we'll talk about that <laughs> but let me give a quick formal introduction to our audience um for those wondering uh, how come a non lawyer or someone not having a law background is here in the podcast today so it's not like that chavi is actually a law graduate she also worked as a lawyer for, for some time and now she is building her own business and today we are going to talk about those online jobs which even lawyers or law students can consider doing uh, so chavi firstly would you like to share why you choose to change your career from law to this and how did this happen i think um, you know my office timings were erratic i think all of all the lawyers would uh, relate to that you know they are experienced erratic timings where you are coming back home at 10 o'clock in the night or 12 o'clock in the night so i wasn't really happy with it i spent um i spent around 2 years working um like that i had no time to hang out with my friends my family i had no time to travel which i love and weekends basically went sleeping because i had to obviously catch up on my sleep and uh, amit who is my husband now and we were dating back then he was already working from home Uh, so he had flexible timings he never had to take sick leaves he was traveling internationally thrice a year staying in different countries for months so basically that is something that appealed to me that seemed like a really good life to have so i think after 1.5 years i decided that uh, you know uh, money and having a good 9 to 5 job or a law firm job or whatever corporate job isn't something that uh, i really want i would prefer having flexibility and independence over it even if i have to let go of some bit of that money so mm. i couldn't see myself basically working for 12 hours for someone else when i could work 12 hours for myself so it was then um i quit my job and looked and started freelancing so i started out as a freelance writer for um marketing and tech companies um and That's i chose true. marketing and tech only because they have huge budgets for content marketing no other area <laughs> no no other business understands content marketing as much as marketing companies and tech companies because they have 
content they live on content yeah smart choice. so that's why yeah that's that's why i decided to target them and within like a few months uh, um, i was making around 2000 to 3000 each month constantly and i was obviously not working with indian clients because uh, they they don't pay you as much the standard of living is obviously not as high as um, in the us or in the uk so i always targeted getting international clients because it's easier to convince them to pay you mm mm-hmm. so a few years down the lane then um, you know we decided that we have so much experience freelancing and traveling and a lot of other things so we decided to share that on our blog that's how mrs daku studio was formed we started talking about freelancing how we started freelance writing then over time it grew and became more of a all rounded blog where you can find um, online opportunities side hustles and today we have like 100000 readers in a month generates passive income generates around 3 to 5000 dollars in a month passively with mm. ads affiliate marketing sponsored content and a lot of other things mm. so um, then we decided to start a youtube channel as well the youtube channel is monetized yet but it is like this bit away from it we are like we just need 50 more hours and it will be monetized so mm. yeah so we have a youtube channel too so basically we have a freelance writing business a blog a youtube channel and we recently also launched mrs daku academy um with a flagship program the first online course that we will be launching about how to start freelancing from india and how to find clients internationally so we plan to include a lot of courses on blogging youtubing etc but uh, we are going to start we started the first one with freelancing because that's how we started hmm okay so just curious to know uh, the reason behind the name uh, mrs daku studio what's so my that? husband's twitter handle was daku that's what his friends called him uh, in fact back in bangalore um, when we were in bangalore that is now we are mm-hmm. in noida uh, a lot of people don't even know his actual name so if you say amit <laughs> people will be like who is that person and you'll say daku and then like okay yeah i now now i know who that person is so when we got married you know they inevitably started calling me mrs daku and uh, when i was starting out with the blog i wanted a name which does not uh, is not very restrictive because i wasn't very sure what i'm going to blog on mm-hmm. so you know if i picked a very specific niche related uh, yeah url it would have been a problem so i decided let's just name it mrs daku studio <laughs> then i can write whatever i want going forward change my niche as many times as i want to yeah crazy <laughs> uh okay um many of our listeners uh, may not have may not be aware about this whole freelancing world okay and it's a uh, huge and it's growing uh, exponentially now especially uh, so can you tell them how it works and what are the basic requirements to start doing freelancing so the basic requirement would be to have a good internet connection and a laptop <laughs> and the motivation to work through it because it's obviously difficult in the beginning when you have uh, no experience about how uh, you know how you should go about it so it does take time but it's but if you're motivated enough you're inspired enough you will get a hang of it if you're a lawyer you're already very smart hmm. i'm sure it's very easy for you to figure things out so you know i generally recommend my students um to invest in an online course because it basically tells you what you need to be doing and what you shouldn't be doing it makes things uh, much more easier it cuts down the overwhelm and the confusion it basically gives you exactly what you need to do makes things very easy mm. so you know uh, the first thing you would want to do if you want to start out as a freelancer would be to choose what you want to do so i like i decided i wanted to be a freelance writer you can decide whatever service you want to provide like there are like thousands of services that you can provide online so then comes creating portfolios having processes for your clients for your own work and managing projects finding clients networking multiple ways of doing it there is just so much to it okay so, yeah i think uh, many people who sort of get intimidated or feel like uh, this is not it for them is because they see whenever they go through such websites like upwork and freelance and stuff uh only um people who have uh, much reviews a lot of reviews and all they get good work so i think that is a kind of stopping thing for those people so what would you suggest them 
I suggest not using fiber at all. Like I suggest people to not use fiber up up at all because you know they take a lot of money from you because you have to obviously pay them for providing you that platform. Hmm. So if you are charging, for example, five dollars, they are taking away at least two dollars, I think, or three dollars from you as their fee. So you're basically not earning as much. And plus, I don't like these platforms because they work on the idea that you have to bid low. Hmm. So you have to basically let go of what you think you deserve to earn on these platforms. That's why I think it's better to go off independent or start networking. Use uh, get creative. Use platforms like Facebook groups. They're legit Facebook groups by business owners where people are talking about uh, things that they are doing. People like me, a lot of good bloggers, a lot of good business owners who are ready to hire people. Network with them. because that's one of the easiest ways to find clients then there is instagram you can use clubhouse you can use bumble biz just get creative you can use linkedin i used to use linkedin when i started out because obviously tech companies are not on instagram for me to reach out to them so yeah i used to use linkedin so there are a lot of ways to go independent and uh, start finding these clients it's a little tough in the beginning of course but if you keep up to it if you keep pitching then you will finally land clients it's not that difficult after a while okay instagram i understand but do uh, companies uh, from the uh, company profile reply on instagram sorry i said uh, did i say instagram first okay linkedin i understand but uh, do uh, company reply from the official instagram or facebook accounts so um, see i was the one who was working with tech companies and marketing companies that's not the only target client you can have so there are for example social media marketers who basically uh, are working with online businesses online bloggers coaches course creators those guys are super active on instagram so you can basically help uh, manage instagram for influencers for example hmm. so those are the kind of people you will find on instagram and you will have to reach out to them on instagram okay so it depends okay. upon who your target client is so i can't find tech companies on instagram but i can Uh, find influencers and bloggers on Instagram. Right, right. Got it. I've seen many people starting their blogs, uh, but if one also has to monetize it really fast, then what are the things he she needs to keep in mind while starting blogging? First thing, it's not fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just never fast. Yeah. Blogging is very very slow. It takes time. It has a steep learning curve. But if you want to get ahead of the curve. Uh, get ahead of the game i think the first thing you should learn is search engine optimization because you just think that there are certain keywords that people are using but that's not exactly what they are searching for it's better to write what they are searching for rather than what you think they are searching for so if you are writing content which ranks on google is the best way to get traffic back to your website and monetize it in different ways so i think um search engine optimization would be my first thing and the second thing was find a niche and try to solve a pain point for your audience it could be a small pain point so for example if you are a lawyer uh, you can basically help a lot of online business owners like me bloggers youtubers course creators with uh, things like terms and conditions policies website policies there is gdpr there is ccpa there are a lot of those things that you know most bloggers are clueless about and they just don't want to do it themselves i being a lawyer i don't want to do it myself uh, so basically you need to find out what your what a certain audience needs and stick to it you can't yeah. be blogging all over the place exactly i was talking about same thing like uh, people think there are many uh, fields uh, where uh, you may think that uh, you don't have enough audience but trust me there is a set of like that there is a sufficient significant audience for each field whichever you can talk about or think about i also think that people often think that this is a competitive niche like xyz is a competitive niche for example mm -hmm. health and wellness is a competitive niche but i think that you know the more competitive it is the more audience you have to reach there are like crores of audience you can reach in health and uh, wellness you know everybody has their share of audience so if it's more competitive i think it's easier to get your audience versus some taking something ultra niche which has very specific audience okay yeah the thing is okay let's break it down like uh, people think that health and wellness is a, a big field and there are 
uh, the fear is that there are already so many people doing it. Then yes. why should I do it? Like, how will I reach to uh, many people? Like, so the thing is, the answer to this is, you go to a particular niche in that field, like health and wellness, but a subcategory which you focus on, which others are not focusing on, right? So in yes. Hmm, you can also take something that someone else is focusing on. That's completely fine. That's what I'm trying to say. Hmm. So you can do a blog on keto diet. Hmm. That's completely fine. There are thousands of bloggers doing keto diet, but you do keto diet. You will you will rank for certain keywords. You will get the traffic because there are just millions and millions of people looking for keto diet. Okay. You know you okay. just need you just need to do a little bit more research into your keywords. Hmm. and hmm. get your get get to rank on google hmm. right. So, right. Okay. if you can find a niche that is not covered enough that's great hmm. Hmm. but you know it, it becomes a little bit uh, daunting to become that creative it comes after a while it comes naturally once you understand how blogging works but as you are starting it's a little daunting to you know try to find something which nobody else is doing or some very few people are doing it becomes very scary i think most of the people don't even start out blogging because they're trying to find a niche that's not covered right agree and uh, the main main thing is to start and then another uh, big thing is to continue it like and improve <laughs> so oh yes continuing it is also a very difficult task because i know that i blogged for almost one and a half to two years before i could make any money from my blog and so it's like writing and it goes into a black hole <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand because the search engine takes time to understand your content and then yeah. rank because even i started budding lawyers with a blog and then there was nothing for few months at least and and then i stopped looking after like the search engine thing analytics and all but then suddenly i came to know after a year or two that some of my blogs are ranking for certain keywords and stuff and there are many visitors coming on to my blog so but then i had moved uh, completely on youtube and stuff so i still the blog is kind of dead but i'm trying to revive it let's see how it goes so basically the thing is it takes time yeah okay uh, this just came to my mind so if we consider lawyers uh, how what tips will you give uh, if they want to start freelancing so linkedin would be the kind of uh, main platform to focus on right to get I clients so i think i think linkedin and because we are lawyers uh, you know those physical events where people hang out those bar association meetings maybe somewhere yeah. where you actually meet people hmm. um is where you can find your uh, clients so as a lawyer also you have a lot of options for freelancing so you can do legal writing that way you can also reach out to law firms worldwide and manage their blogs because that's something that you can do despite wherever you have done your law degree taken your law hmm. degree from hmm. you can get into legal research because they do outsource research contract drafting and review is another thing that they are very uh, comfortable outsourcing to indian freelancers if you go on fiverr you will see a lot of them doing it okay then there is uh, so there are many lawyers on fiverr yes there are a lot lot of them uh, doing contract review and drafting on fiverr hmm. so that's something uh, in demand because obviously you know they outsource it those kind of work to indian um, companies there is there are lpos doing it so mm -hmm. as a freelancer also you can find and work with smaller law firms for example then you have transcription you have proofreading and those kind of things that you can offer it's not as much in demand in india but if you can uh, work with us law firms or us law lawyers and attorneys the ones which are uh, working independently then uh, they are definitely interested in it because proofreading is something which is very important in uh, legal contracts and all those things right right so hopefully uh, young lawyers and law students uh... I've got an idea how to start freelancing. Uh, let's move it. Um, are there any specific skills uh, one must develop to take up these online jobs? Uh, so it depends upon what you are uh, offering as a freelancer, first of mm -hmm. all. So that skill is something that you will obviously have to hone, unless, of course, you're offering uh, legal services which you are comfortable with. 
so for example like i said proofreading and transcription so if you're providing those things then you need to learn those skills because obviously there are technicalities to it besides that i think marketing is something that you have to be really okay with you have to be real, really okay with selling yourself you know because sometimes we feel that i'm too salesy i'm too sleazy you're doing this is so sleazy mm. i'm not going to do this but you have to keep on promoting yourself keep on showing up on social media keep on pitching people even if they reject you thousand times that's how it's going to work that's how a freelancing business works you know you are going to get rejected multiple times before you are accepted so i think marketing is something you have to be really comfortable with and learn Hmm. I think uh, there is kind of a one is to ten ratio. So you pitch ten times and you will get one offer, something like that. I think that's a very good ratio if that's what is happening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I would say if you send hundred pitches, you will probably get three. Hmm. You'll probably get uh, three, and I mean three uh, jobs or three uh, like proposals, and then you have to choose one. No, no three jobs. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm saying okay. three three proper clients will uh, sign contracts with you and stuff like that. Uh, it also depends, you know. Uh, so when I say hundred pitches, I'm talking about extremely cold emailing where you have had no connections with the client. Hmm. So you know that's why when you get on LinkedIn or Facebook group, I prefer um, and I advise people to start networking first. Like give out your um, knowledge to people for free, help people out for free, so that people know that they exist, that this person exists. who have knowledge about this person so when you are pitching people they have an idea from where they know you right so that tends to convert better than you know sending an email uh, which is cold i'm not hmm. saying cold emailing doesn't work that also works but your ratio the one you said 10 is to 1 works better if you're networking that's how it works when you're networking hmm hmm angry so marketing and networking i think are two skills which you definitely definitely need to have Hmm. And other things, whatever is there, you can learn it from YouTube easily. Yeah. So it's not okay. Yeah, as a lawyer, we are you know uh, we are trained to piece things together. So if you can watch a lot of videos and read a lot of articles, you will put everything together easily. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Do you know any lawyers earning their full time income from blogging? Okay, so I see there are a lot of blogs in India. I'm not sure how much they are earning. So there's Law Octopus, there is Super Lawyer, there's I Pleaders. Mm. I'm not very sure how and what their business uh, structure is, but uh, but but they have ad but these advertisements. Are like these these are big teams. They they are companies uh, sort of. So there is no individual you, doing this. Do so you know any individuals? Think, I know individuals. They're not Indians though. So um, okay. There is there are two people that I know that they are doing this. One is uh, Mariam and one is uh, Amira. Hmm. Okay, so you can find uh, Mariam at Mariam at Law dot com hmm. and Freelance and Marketing dot com. Those are her two websites. Okay. Okay, and Amira's website is a self guru. Hmm. Now both of her both of them are doing something similar. So they basically help creative entrepreneurs like bloggers, coaches, anybody who has an online business basically. Hmm. with uh, their business so they help with the incorporation trademarks copyright uh, dmca filing dmcas uh, launching their products courses having bundles hosting a giveaway legally and a lot of those things you know to ensure that whatever they are running whatever business they are running is running legally so they provide coaching they have a lot of products they do a lot of things and i know uh mariam personally uh, so we have chatted a few times and i know that her business is amazing in the sense that both of them i think are earning more than 50000 dollars in a month with their blog and products passively and i i don't think that's the entire picture of their business yeah and i think the blog is acting more uh, for marketing in the on the marketing yeah. front and the services which they offer the income come major income comes from there Yes, right. definitely, and it's a it's a niche which is not explored much. So right. uh, I've been blogging for four years, and these are the only two lawyers that I know of that mm. people talk mm. about. And in India, there is absolutely none. So right. I have prob I have problems with it myself. So when I wanted to file taxes and I wanted to incorporate this legally, there is nobody who understood what I do. Mm. 
So it was a bit, it was a challenge for me to find somebody who actually understand how blogging, YouTubing works and how taxation would work with it, how GST works with it. I'm still struggling actually. So if you know somebody who can deal with this, I would love to chat with them. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So if lawyers, if you are listening to this podcast, do contact Mrs. Daku Studio and help her out. Yeah. Okay. Um, or, or maybe start a business. <laughs> that yeah. will really make yeah. money. <laughs> this is interesting because blogs are one thing. Even on YouTube, when I started making content, even now, I hardly see any lawyers doing something interesting. Uh, I know uh, there are two of some of my friends. One is Amish, Amish Agarwal. Many people may know him. He crossed, like, he's uh, growing on YouTube a lot. Uh, second is um, Isha, Isha Kapoor. With uh, her, I have made a collab video which will be releasing soon on YouTube. So these are two, three lawyers who, who I can see creating some different content, like blogs, a, a lawyer's vlog not like so that is something interesting so things like that otherwise there are many channels who are just uh, providing uh, casual information about laws like explaining some section of some banner right but i think that can be learned from any textbook I, so uh, you you uh, need to think creatively and become creative there's a lot of content even in law so if you just think a bit differently you will find something and maybe there'll be youtubers who are lawyers too so let's see how that works out okay any hacks from this field uh, you would like to share i think you just need to be creative like you said uh, you know if you want to uh, stick to the legal field and do something then you need to find out something that is happening now so with the pandemic for example there are a lot of people who are uh, getting into freelancing mm. and Freelancers also need legal protection because they are treated as somebody who can be fired and hired, the hired and fired actually. So, you know, you, they need contracts. People actually pay up good money for uh, creating freelancing contracts that protect you. So those mm -hmm. are the kind of things, uh, you know, people want to know about and there is no YouTube channel, like you said, or no blog that talks about it. So just get creative, see what's happening around you and, you know, try and use your law degree to solve that problem. And if you are not going to be using your law degree like I do, <laughs> then you have a lot of things to do. <laughs> just get creative. <laughs> and there's just so many things to do. Just pick mm. one at a time though. You can't be blogging, YouTubing, freelancing all together. So just start with one, establish yourself in that field once before you move on to another thing. Mm. Otherwise you... you will quit everything. <laughs> and finally you have to do something so you will stick to something which you don't like right. or, uh, yeah um okay would you like to share any mistakes you did previously which you would have avoided yeah there are tons of them <laughs> <laughs> for example i um i think i started out blogging without having any idea about how to blog so i did a lot of stupid things yeah. I spent a lot of time on Quora and Reddit. I spent a lot of time doing some link parties for backlinks and stuff like that. All mm -hmm. It's all shady things that I did not know are shady. Mm. So, you know, there are a lot of uh, things that you shouldn't be doing as a blogger. I have done. Uh, like I said, link parties and then, you know. What are, what are link maybe parties? Doing... So, basically, you want bloggers host them and, uh, you know, they have a section on their page wherein they'll uh, link out to one of your articles uh, and you know each of the bloggers that have participated does the same thing on their blog so it's like having multiple backlinks okay, okay, okay. to your uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, blog which is mm -hmm. ideally something that is penalized by google mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be doing it mm -hmm. so uh, you know I've done that. I've done a lot of uh, crappy things on my blog before I realized that I need to stop and maybe invest in some course which teaches me how to do this instead mm. of trying my way out by trial and error. So that's something that I have done. Um, even in freelance, as a freelance writer, I think I have made a lot of mistakes, you know, not, not creating boundaries with your clients. Your clients can sit on your head and dance like your client, like, you know, like they want it right now. 
they will push you around they, you have already created a scope for your work and they'll be like ye bhi kar do ye bhi kar do they'll be like you know do mm. it, do everything possible they will push you so once or twice i have done it um the third time i was like you can leave me and fire me but i'm not going to do <laughs> because it really hurts <laughs> you know so you know you have to start creating those boundaries and learn to say no which is very very difficult because you know as a freelancer when you're starting out you're like this is my bread and butter i cannot if i say no it's very easy for them to fire you hmm. but you know you need to respect yourself first before anybody else is going to respect you in that way right. so that's one as a freelancer one as a blogger youtube i think i just started out without any equipment without learning what i should be ideally doing on this how to do research just from my own whims and fancies i started my youtube channel last year i think in april i decided that no i think i need proper equipment i need a proper um a research i need to do keyword research tag research and everything and i think since then my blog my youtube channel has picked up so yeah lot of things i also took it personally when people told me that you probably are not a good lawyer and that is why you're not doing this <laughs> i think that is also one mistake i think you should just let people say whatever they want and not bother yeah i i mean i don't know why people think that thankfully no one has said this to me but <laughs> yeah and you are you still working in the field of law that's yeah, i mean ha huh. i am trying to help uh, others but i am not working as a lawyer still dealing with lawyers now <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> people tell me i'm wasting my national or university degree oh you graduated from an nlu yeah which which nlu hidayatullah national law university raipur raipur okay okay so this is uh, obviously people will tell you like you graduated <laughs> from an nlu and you are not working as a lawyer <laughs> so yeah then you and then i to... did my masters from jindal okay you also did the llm so it's like double thing to people you know say things yeah. to you. yeah i understand completely especially your classmates uh, or your faculty if they meet you sometimes. faculty members especially actually mm. they make me feel bad about it till now mm. <laughs> tell them that you are ready to teach freelancing to law students in their college <laughs> <laughs> they will drive me away there like let people do uh, whatever they want to do <laughs> uh, please share an incident from your career which is very memorable to you i think it has to be when that business insider journalist reached out to me for uh, for inputs in the article and then turns out that half the article is what i had to say it was like an interview for me hmm. so you know that half of the business insider article is what i had to share with them Uh, I think I never thought that I would be featured on places like Business Insider and Forbes, Reader's Digest, Yahoo Finance, MSN. It just feels like a dream every time I think about it. So I think that is something which has happened, and I can I can still feel that you know if I think about it right now, I feel it has happened right now, and I'm that happy about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And how much uh, like after how many years uh, did this happen? I started blogging in 2018 so yeah uh I was featured in business insider last year so around two and a half years or two years i think mm. so two and a half years of full time work like full time blogging yeah. and freelancing and stuff great yeah. i think that's a, a bit early maybe yeah it's quite good to yeah <laughs> <laughs> networking helps yeah <laughs> so <laughs> network expert here so I am actually I wouldn't call myself a network expert I'm an introvert it's very difficult to get me to talk So uh, those uh, who are like Chavi I would suggest you that you draft one message okay one message and then you just copy paste but don't send it just the copy pasted message okay you edit a little bit there to wherever you are sending firstly the name I have done this mistake. Okay. <laughs> I have. I have not done this mistake yet. I have not done this mistake. <laughs> and then I look at the message. Why didn't he or she reply? Okay, I have <laughs> used some uh, wrong name. So, firstly, the name, and then uh, you just personalize the message. Uh, look uh, 
at her or his profile or the company's profile what they are doing what on what they are working or what uh, like what have they achieved something like that and highlight that, that in your message okay so that this gives an uh, impression to the reader that this person is serious like the, this per person has gone to my profile so he is quite serious about the job so these are some points you must remember otherwise so you jo don't have to draft the message all the time you can use the message previous message but do edit it and read it once before you <laughs> you know say, uh, hit the send button Mm -hmm. it's very important to be personalized in your message that's important and one more tip i'll just add to this is uh, you know when you're writing an email it's not for you it's for the person who's writing you uh, you know it's for the person who you're writing to so take into consideration what you can do for them instead of what you're doing for yourself mm -hmm. so nobody wants to read what you are doing right now you are going to highlight what you can do for them so that's going to work out if you can uh, draft your messages by well and we yeah. are bond drafters ha ah, i mean there's nothing you can't learn okay uh, thanks shavi for this great conversation i enjoyed it a lot and thanks listeners for listening to this podcast uh, if this ep episode added some value to you then please share this episode with your friends and colleagues and also check out the other episodes available here uh, you can also follow us on youtube and other podcast platforms all our episodes are available on spotify google apple podcast and stitcher too Thank you. Thank you.